Hello Stovies, a uh, little update here. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for subscribing uh, and all the guys for liking. It's nice to know I've got an audience. Okay, this is for Ron Dot, I think his name was. He wanted to know how I made the door for the rocket stove. Okay, a used piece of old scrap, uh, two inch by quarter inch mild steel for the frame and the door. What I did was made a frame up first of all to fit the rocket stove box then I copied it exactly you know exact exact same size cut the pieces to make up the door and I just welded them up. Uh, a little tip here when you're welding something and you want to grind it off if you grind a chamfer on both them edges where you're welding it'll create a bit of a V so you can fill the V up with weld and when you grind back you've still got some weld in there um, so make up the frame right you want something so you can recess the glass you want to weld something on it so you can recess the glass back what I used was a bit of half inch bar it's actually three quarter by half inch but it would be better if it was three quarters this stuff because it will give you a deeper rebate to sit the glass and that plate in. Um, I'll come to that in a second. So you literally just weld a piece of that all the way around. And that gives you your rebate. I then put cut two little plates to fix the glass in to hold the glass in place. I'm pretty sure I use some of this two inch by eighth, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths flat bar again. Uh, I slice that down the centre and I just cut two pieces off it, drill two holes in each one and then I ran a drill and a tap through and tapped it through to the face of the door. I think you can probably just see the ends of the bolts there. You can grind them off obviously if they were sticking out too far when you've put them in. Um, so once you've got all that welded up you want to weld a couple of pins on the back there to mount the door this will form the hinge to mount the door on the rocket or on the firebox I just made two little plates that's one of them off the loose side but that little plate there you make you make two of them, you, you, I welded one onto one side of the firebox so it's fixed in place and then on the other side it was welded on it wasn't welded on I made that plate so I could again so I could add something to tap to because the firebox isn't that thick it's, it's only eight steel the firebox so I um, cut that little plate that I intended to weld on but I ran the tap straight through the lot and it actually tapped into the firebox as well and, and it's holding so far but I'm not going to weld it on now until I've made a new firebox but I, I will weld that on uh, yeah so you can if you've got that little removable plate there that means you can take your door on and off should you have to replace your glass or you know whatever so yeah that's that's literally all it is and it you know it just gives you stable hinge when it comes to fitting the glass get some of this flat um, fire seal rope gasket type stuff it's self adhesive you just peel the backing off and stick it on you run that round that strip because that's the closing face of the door you then put some underneath the glass and it would be better if there was some underneath this plate as well but because I only used half inch I was I was struggling because this holding plate was going to be start being more or less flush with this and I didn't want that touching the other surface when the door closed so I didn't bother putting on any under that but it would have been better so if you can use some three quarter inch stuff for that if you, it'll give you a bit more room um, 
you don't want to tighten this down too much these holding plates because if you do it's going to crack the glass that glass ideally should be able to move slightly you know within its enclosure because as the metal expands and contracts and also the glass will you've got to allow a little bit of movement so don't tighten them down too much it'll crack the glass uh, and the glass may crack when the stove's in operation so they're literally just finger tight and then a, a very slight just a turn with the allen key just to bed it down onto the fire uh, gasket stuff there I suggest what you do is you set all that up and then you weld the hinge pins on so set the set the actual door in place on top of your frame and then when you weld your pins on so that you know it's hinging in the right place but the hinges the hinge pins ideally should be virtually at the bottom of the box not at the top because it's if you put the pins higher up it's going to sort of have a cantilever effect and it's going to make the bottom edge drag so the lower it is that's the what do you call it the hinged point and it will just rotate off that lower point there uh, I think that is all there is to it really the glass I bought from a company uh, it is proper stove glass and I didn't know but you can actually cut this stuff they wanted more money off of me to cut it to that shape so I, I ordered a square piece and just cut them two triangles off it cuts dead easy with a glass cutter it's just not a problem you definitely need to put a handle of some sort on this because it, it gets as hot as the firebox does this door so the handle that was a five inch nail I just welded on and I wrapped some an old welding rod round a half inch pipe to get that coil or spring and then I tacked it on at each end there as long as that spring or spiral isn't touching the rod or the nail it won't transfer any heat to the center so that can be as hot as you like and you can pick you can hold that with bare skin it won't burn you but definitely put a hand on it if you're trying to pick that up with gloves chances are you're going to drop the door and you're going to smash the glass because so, it, it's quite a heavy lump now as it's all welded together um, the other thing I probably shouldn't have said was I held, I kept that bar there slightly back away from the edge so I, so I could just tack it on because I didn't want to have to start grinding welds away if them two had been flush I would have had to grind a great big weld down to sort of pretty it up so just kept it in a bit also reduces the glass size a little bit as well and that's about it simple the simplest way is usually the best way to find another thing I was going to say was if you're having trouble with your glass sutting up on any stove really if you get get some caustic soda crystals and dissolve them in water cold water preferably about say what a tablespoon in a pint put it in one of them little squirty bottle things and uh, you can use it to just spray on the glass leave it on for say 30 seconds a minute and it will take all the tar all the soot everything off the glass it's fantastic it cleans glass up really well and that's it I think that should cover it all done um, a little update on my stove uh, my next stove the boiler and boiler stove I'm planning to build the uh, water heater I've managed to cobble a few bits and pieces together this week to build a sort of mock-up test stove uh, some bits of tube and barrels and one thing and another and I, I did a burn the other night and wow it was absolutely fantastic it just worked better than I thought it would so I'm going to be putting an update up on that as soon as I've built a boiler I did a, a test sort of mock-up boiler but it was, it was actually no water inside the jacket so um, over the next couple of nights this week I'm going to actually build a water jacket again using two different size gas bottles I'm going to cut them down I'm going to put one inside the other I'm going to weld a collar around the bottom tap it 
so I can fill it with water. I'm going to connect it up to a radiator, big radiator in the garden, um, with a header tank, and I'm going to see how long it takes to heat this rad up, and how much fuel it uses to heat this rad up, and it's that's going to give me some idea of the output and BTUs that this thing is producing. I'm really, I'm really uh, excited about this because I want this to replace the stove I have in my house, which is a big hunter wood burner. I can't remember the size of it, but it's, it's got a high output boiler on it. It currently runs seven or eight radiators, and it does two lots of underfloor heating, and it does the hot water as well. And I think this new rocket stove design is going to eat it alive I think I really do think it's going to thrash it and it's going to burn probably a fifth of the wood that the hunter stove burns it's a good stove the hunter don't get me wrong and you know it's a 1500 quid stove but uh, the amount of wood it eats is phenomenal so this rocket is the way forward and it's uh, I think it's got commercial possibilities this if it turns out the way I think it will and there's no reason to assume it won't so stay tuned guys and uh, if you want to subscribe subscribe and if you want to like like and uh, I'll get back to you shortly okay bye for now